Greetings hobbyists, this is Arsans of Vool. And in this Blender tutorial, we're going to be having a look at how you can modify a shape, specifically in this instance, a curved shape, after you've applied all of the modifiers. So earlier this week, I set out this challenge, which was to effectively change this curved shape to have this outline, but we've still got to protect all of the bits that we don't want to change, which is everything other than this outer series of faces. If you want to get a bit more details about the challenge, then there's a link in the top right hand corner. Feel free to have a look at that. Now, there are several ways of going about this, and I'm just going to show you the way that I would choose, and I'll explain why I'd choose it. There are other methods. The most obvious one, which would be to use proportional editing directly on this object, but I prefer to actually use a modifier because it means that afterwards, if you don't like something, you can always just delete that modifier or you can correct and add to that modifier later. So let's go through how we're gonna do this. Now the first thing, and the only issue with using this as a modifier, is that it becomes a little bit more difficult to protect the area that we want protected. If I go into face mode, we could do something like hiding all these faces if we're not gonna use a modifier, but a modifier is gonna affect everything. But as part of the way this was created, I've added these seams on. I have made a video on quick selection tips, which includes why these seams are useful. But effectively, what I can do is just select one face and then press L and it will select everything up to those seams. And now all I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this off the shape. Now, if I had hard ops, there's a much quicker way of doing this, but I'm going to do it without. So just P, separate by selection, and then go to object mode. And I've now got this object here and this object here. Now, there are also two ways of using the modifier that I'm going to use. So I'm actually going to grab both of these, press Shift and D to duplicate them, Y, and just move this a little bit on the Y axis so I can show you both ways. So the first way I'm going to do, and I'm actually going to just press H to hide that part, so we've just got this bit showing, is to use hard ops. Now, in both these instances, we're going to use a lattice modifier. And lattice modifiers have some really nice features to them that's going to make this pretty perfect for modifying this shape. So to use the lattice modifier with hard ops, if you don't have hard ops, you're more than welcome to just skip to the part that's not using hard ops. I'll put that as a chapter, but you might want to look at this because it might mean that you decide that purchasing hard ops and also box cutter is something really worth it for you. So I'm going to press Q. I'm going to add modifier and I'm going to click lattice. And what that's going to do is that's going to automatically create a lattice that's exactly the right shape for this object. The next thing that I can do is if I just press Q again while the lattice is selecting, I've got these options of adding things in on the X, Y, and Z axis. And effectively what this is gonna do is add loop cuts on this axis. The first one I want to use is Y. And I'm just gonna move my mouse to the right to increase that. Somewhere around there is probably about right. That might be a bit more than I need, but we'll go with it. And I'm gonna press Q, go down to Z, and I'm gonna do exactly the same thing. And I'm gonna try and make it so this lattice is relatively making cubes. That's just something I found quite useful as a tip. Then, if I just go to edit mode, I can now select parts of this lattice. You'll notice we haven't got any on this side on the X axis. We could add those in if they were necessary, but in this instance, they're not gonna be and we can move our object around. For example, if I just press those and press G, you'll see it's gonna deform the object. Exactly in the same way as using proportional editing, but importantly, if I press G, and then if I hide this and select this object, you'll notice that I can turn this off and on. So you can always go back and change it later, which is really useful. Right, I'm just gonna undo all of that because we don't want that silly blob. Now, the other thing that's important is that as we move around a lattice, it will affect the other parts of the lattice nearby, generally about two away. So for example, if I start moving this and press G, you'll notice this is affecting, if I zoom in, I've moved these parts of the lattice, but it's actually affected it, well, one, two away, and it started to curve it. And that's what's great about a lattice, is that it automatically attempts to smooth things. The other thing that's great about a lattice is that I can also use it in combination with proportional editing. So for example, I can press G here and scale up or scale down. Now, to try and keep my object from becoming blobby and not really looking right, I'm gonna do this and I'm only gonna move things on the Y axis. So each time I'm gonna press G, Y, and I'm just gonna move that out. And I'm just gonna scale this up a little bit 
and we've got about that right to there. Then I'm going to select a little bit less, G and Y, pull that out a little bit less. I might go a little bit more over to the side, G and Y. Let's scale that down. And effectively, I'm just going to keep doing that each time. Affecting less and less until I get to the point where I'm probably here. Might need to go a little bit less there. So notice I'm trying to make it so I don't affect the vertices or the part of the mesh that's furthest over to the left because I want to keep those in place. About there, object H, and that's looking pretty perfect. Now at this point I can unhide those extra bits. Okay, and you'll notice I have made a slight gap there but we can fix that relatively quickly. Now, before we do that, I'm just gonna come over to this one. I'm gonna show you exactly the same thing, but this time, let's H to hide that. We're gonna do it without hard ops. And you'll see why hard ops is quite worth it as a tool. This is just one of the things it does, and it does make life a lot easier. So first thing, I need my cursor to this object. So I'm gonna go to object, snap, and cursor to selected. And I'm gonna press shift and A, and I'm gonna bring in a lattice. And you'll notice that's all the way down there. That's not the way we want it. So I'm gonna to to press S to scale it up, G to move it. And what we've got to do is we want to get our lattice as perfectly fitting this object as we can. So that's looking pretty good. S and Z, G and Z. So remember in the hard ops version, this did it entirely in one go and automatically worked out the size. Here we have to do it manually. And while that's okay, it's just a little bit of an annoyance. And let's have a look. So we need to S and X to get that bigger there. So just a little bit of wasted time. And you'll also notice that the sizing is not as perfect. Next, we need to get this lattice attached to the object. So I'm gonna select the object, add modifier, lattice, and I need to select my lattice. So there we go, that's now done. And then I can go back to my lattice and I can start deforming it, except for now I need to break this up into bits as we did with this one. And here you have to do that because you don't have the Q button to use. You have to come into the lattice and you need to change the resolution. And for some unknown reason, they've called this U, V and W. I'm sure there is a reason for this, but effectively that is X, Y and Z. So I want to up the Y, so X, Y is V. So something like that. And then I want to up the Z something like that, and again, make it relatively like a cube. At that point, I can go to edit mode, and it's exactly the same process. I'm gonna go somewhere like there, GY, pull that out a bit, a little bit less, GY, pull that out a bit. Let's fiddle with that, that looks about good. So you'll notice I'm just playing around each time with the amount of vertices that I've got selected in the lattice and the amount that I've got selected as part of my proportional editing. And to make this circle bigger or smaller, I'm just, I should have mentioned this earlier, moving my mouse wheel. So just scrolling it up and down to make it bigger or smaller and exactly the same process. And we're gonna end up with a similar result, but it just took a little bit longer to set up. Now we need to start bringing these objects back together. So firstly, let's unhide the thing that we're gonna try and bring it together with. And again, we've got this slight gap here. And the first thing we need to do is we need to apply this modifier. Now, if this was me, this would be the point where I'd make a saved copy of this so that if I wanted to go back and edit this lattice, then I can do, because after we do this, it's gonna be finalized. We could always apply another lattice later, but it's just easier to have that saved file. So apply all, and now I'm gonna select that, select the object I want to combine it with, Press Control and J, so it's joined. If we hadn't applied the lattice, this would have joined and automatically reverted back to its old shape. And then we're gonna go into vertex mode, and all we're gonna do is press A, and then we're gonna go M and merge by distance. And all we need to do is get it to the point where these vertices join together. So I'm just gonna scroll, and you'll notice I don't have to go far, and there we go they are all joined together at this point. Though oh, it has done that a little bit messily. So maybe actually we don't want to do this. This might be worth actually individually bringing these closer together. So all we need to do is actually, I'm gonna press M by distance, 
bring that down a little bit so that it's not causing a problem. Let's have a good look at this. Which point does it deform funkily? Just about there. And once we've got to that, I'm going to select that vertex and that vertex. And if you don't have machine tools, it's M and then at last. Or if you do have machine tools, you just need to press one, which makes everything much quicker. So a real time saver. Honestly, machine tools is probably the best thing because now we've got halfway. Just doing that one to be sure. Object, Alt X, change it to symmetry and symmetrize and we've got it all done. Seriously guys, go get machine tools. Even if you don't get hard ops because you have to pay for it, machine tools is free. And there we've got our fixed shoulder pad. The geometry is still looking great. We haven't negatively impacted this area on the inside. And we've kept this looking nice and smooth as this rounded curve. And that's been aided by using a lattice modifier. So let me know how you did on this challenge. Did you use a different method to me? If you did, please do feel free to say in the comments. I'd love to hear what other people were trying out and see what worked for people. Did you find something that was as easy as this? Maybe you found a method that was even easier. And if that's the case, I'd love to hear from you because I'm always wanting to learn new things. As always, if you haven't subscribed to the channel and you want to learn some other tips and tricks, do check out some of my other videos or even subscribe so you can see when I put up new videos. Have a great day, guys.